To finish off with this topic, these are our last types of equations we're going to be solving. So now you can see that I've got the distributive property as well as now the equal sign. And so I'm going to need to uh, model this first and we'll see through the modeling that we actually have two different ways of looking at it solving algebraically. All right, so to start off, with this one I've got three times uh, and then in brackets x plus 2, and that's equal to negative 6 on the other side. So what I'm going to start off with again is this 3. So that 3 in front is multiplying the brackets. So if we think about our multiplication, that means 3 times x plus 2, and that's 3 groups of x plus 2. So I'm going to just kind of make a little note on the side for myself that I need 3 groups. Now you don't have to write that part in, but I'm just going to put that there to help keep me organized. Now inside each of my groups, I need to have an x. So I'm going to pull this one from the side here. Oops, you'd think I would remember how to do this from before. So I'm going to pull one from the side here. Okay, and then I also need to have two positive ones. So I'm going to pull this one from the side here. And these ones are slightly more difficult for me to grab. I'm not sure why, but they just for some reason on the tablet are a little bit harder to grab than the others. No, 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 no. Come on. You're making me look ridiculous in my own video. Okay, so I'm going to grab an x and then two positive ones. Now that's my first group. Okay, so I've got my x and two positive ones, and that comes from inside the brackets. I've got x as well as plus two. Okay, so I've created my first grouping, but I need to have three groups of x plus two. So I'm going to copy and get a second group, and then copy and get a third group of x plus 2. So now you can see, because I made those little notes on the side, that I have three rows, and each row has an x and two positive ones. Now, I also need on the right-hand side to have my six negatives. So i got to bring six negatives over. Okay, so I've got my first one. And remember, what I want you to do with these negatives is I want you to put them into equal groupings, okay? So now again, whenever it decides that I'm allowed to actually copy this one, my goodness. Oh, rats. I don't know why it's not going. Let's try this one. Nope. Oh, there we go. Okay, we'll make this process a little bit simpler on ourselves. Okay, so I've got my first two. I'm going to copy them. There's my second two, so now I've got four. And then I'll do it one more time, and now I have negative six. And you can see that I've grouped them together, okay, into three equal rows as well. And that's important because as we start looking at solving these, there's actually two ways I can solve this problem. So the first thing I'm going to do is on the left-hand side, I have to get rid of my extra ones, right? That's what we've been doing, is we get rid of our constant or those extra ones first. So right now I have six positive ones. And the way I get rid of six positive ones is by drawing in six negative ones. Now I'm just going to cheat a little bit here, because as you've seen, my copy-pasting skills are no good. I need to add in six negative ones to cancel out my six positive ones. But I have to remember, whatever I do on the left-hand side, I also need to do the same thing on the right-hand side. Okay, so I'm gonna t take another copy here. Okay, so this second grouping is part of what's being added onto both sides. On the left-hand side, those six positives cancel out with those six negatives. They just make one big giant zero pair. So that all goes and becomes zero. Well, what am I left with now? Now, I'm left with, on the left-hand side, I have those three x's. So I draw them again. And on the right-hand side, I have these uh, 12 negative ones. Again, I'm going to make sure that I've got them in three nice equal rows. Now I've got three x's is equal to 12 ones, and I can see the way I've organized them that I have three equal 
rows. And each row has an x as well as four negative ones. And so that would be my solution. What is in each row? In each row, I have an x, and in each row, I have four negative ones. And that would be my solution. x is equal to negative four. Okay? Let's look at another one. What if I had something like uh, two x, or sorry, two times x minus five? So again, that two in front tells me that I need to have two groupings or two rows. The x minus five, so I need to have an x tile. So I'm gonna bring an x tile in. And then I need five negatives. So I get five negatives there to go along with my x. Now that's only one of my groupings. So I built my first row, and that first row has that green x tile and then five negative ones, but I need two rows or two groups of the exact same thing. So I'm gonna make another copy of that row. Now on the right hand side, I need eight negative ones, and just for the purposes of making life easier in terms of the drawing, I'm just gonna steal and copy those eight. So there you go. Right now I have two x's on the left hand side and then the 10 ones on the left hand side that are negative and on the right hand side I have eight negative ones. Well what I need to do is I need to now get rid of these extra ones on the left hand side. I gotta get rid of these guys. So I'm actually going to take if I've got 10 negatives I need the exact same thing again. I need to have 10 but in this case instead of being negative I need them to be positive. So I'm going to add in 10 positives onto both sides. Okay, so I've added them in on the left. And I have to add them in on the right as well, so I'll make sure that I add them on the right here too. On the left hand side, these all combine to make one big giant zero pair. And on the right hand side, I have eight negatives that are going to cancel with eight of my positives, and they make a big zero pair. So everything that I put in that blue uh, rectangle gets crossed out. So now here's what I'm left with. I'm left with these two x's. They didn't get crossed out. And on the right hand side I'm left with these two positive ones. They didn't get crossed out either. And when I put them in I'm gonna make sure that I have them in two nice equal rows. And as you can see now I have two x's on the left and two ones on the right I have them in two equal rows where each row contains an x as well as a ones tile. And so I simply write now that in each row I've got an x and in each row I've got a one. And so that gives me x is equal to one. Okay? Well, as a reminder, it does look a little bit different if I've got a negative in front, okay? So again, I'm gonna start off by saying, okay, negative four, let's look at this four. That means I've got four rows. So I'm just gonna make a note to, on the side that I need four equal rows. In each row, I'm going to need an X, so I'm gonna bring an X down. And in each row, I need two positive ones, so I'm gonna bring these positive ones over. And for those of you wondering, I did pause the video and I figured out that I needed to grab in the bottom corner to make them move nicely. See? The things we learn. So, I have a row with x plus 2, but I need 4 of the exact same row. So I'm going to copy that row 4 times. Okay? Now, because of this negative sign, that negative sign is now going to change my tiles. So the X's right now are colored in green. But I'm going to need to draw them again. Okay, I'm going to draw them again, but I gotta flip them all over to their opposite color. So instead of them being green, I need to change them to white. The same thing happens with my ones tiles. I'm gonna take all those ones tiles and instead of them being red, I'm gonna flip them to white. 
Okay, so remember that negative in front we still draw out using the distributive property the same way, but then we have to flip our tiles to their opposite color. So they go from either green to white or white to green if they're the x's, or red to white or white to red if they are the ones. Now, on the other side of the equal sign, okay, I just have 12 ones. I have 12 positive ones, and so those are fine as they are. They don't get flipped because the negative is not acting on both sides. It's just acting on the left-hand side. It wasn't an opposite that I've done on both sides of the equation. Okay. Again, I want to get rid of these ones tiles first. The way I get rid of those eight negative ones is I take those eight negative ones and I draw them again, but I color them in opposite. So I'm going to add eight positive ones. And whatever I add in on the left hand side, I have to add in on the right hand side as well. Okay, now those moved up on me so they're not making nice rows. There we go. On the left hand side, those guys cancel out because they're colored opposite. Okay, and when they cancel out, they just give me a nice big zero pair. Everything else, though, there's no canceling on the right hand side because they were all colored in red, so they're all buddies. They just make a bigger group. I'm now left with the stuff not crossed out. I've got my four X's. And on the right hand side, it looks like I have 20 ones here in total. And I've got them in uh, five, or sorry, four nice equal rows. And so I'm going to look at what is in each row. Well, each row contains an X, a negative X, I should say, and five ones. So in total now, I have a negative X. as well as five positive ones. Now that gives me negative x is equal to positive five, but I don't like that. I don't want to know what negative x is. I care about what positive x is. So what I want to do is instead of having negative x, I want to switch it to its other color. Oh, I don't know. There we go. My green color. I want to switch it from white to green. Now if I change that one to its opposite color, remember, we have to do the same thing on the other side. So these guys are going to go from being red to being white. And now, instead of having negative x as positive 5, I have that positive x is equal to negative 5. So really what happens is both uh, my x and my constant go to their opposite signs. Okay, one last one. Again, this one might be beyond the scope of what grade 8s can and should do, but I think you guys can handle it. The number in front, I have 3, so this is 3 times 2x minus 1 is in brackets is equal to 15. So again, that 3 in front means I need to have 3 groups. Okay, In each of my groups, I need to have, in this case, 2x's. So I'm going to bring in 1, and then 2x's. I also need to have a single negative. So I'm going to bring in just that one negative. Okay, And I need three rows of that same thing. So I'm going to copy that row three times. One, two, three. On the right hand side, I need to have 15 of these positives. Now I'm going to cheat just a little bit and I'm going to bring in my first three. And then I know that I can make a copy of this and just keep doing columns of three until I have 15 red ones in total. So I'm just cheating a little bit and I'm not drawing all of them in. Okay. Well now I have <clears throat> now I have to get rid of these ones on the left hand side. And the way I get rid of three ones that are negative or colored in white is I'm going to draw three that are colored in red. That's my opposite. And in order to do that, I have to remember what I add onto one side or what I change on one side, I have to change on the other. So I'm bringing in another group of three onto the right-hand side. 
on the left. Those guys cancel out and make a zero pair. Now here's what I'm left with on the left hand side. I'm left with these six ones. Now I don't really want all six of them to be totally separate. I would like to have them into six rows because I'm not interested about having two x's in a row. I want to know what I have when there is a single x in a row. So I know I started with, oh I didn't actually uh, copy that one. Here we go. I don't want to steal it. That looks confusing. Okay. I want to have those six and instead of having two x's in each row, I'm going to create six separate rows. And now I've got to take my uh, 18 ones that I had on the other side and I need to take these 18 ones and split them into six equal rows. And if I had been smarter about it, I would have grabbed three at a time. But unfortunately, I was not being smart about it. There's my 18 ones. And all I did with those 18 ones was I just drew them in six equal rows. And now I can clearly see that every row contains an x as well as three ones. And so in total, each row contains an x, not what I wanted to hit. Each row contains an x as well as three ones. And that gives me the solution of x is equal to three. Okay, so that is how we model using distributive property and we can still solve. So you use the distributive property to draw out your model. Remember the first number tells you how many rows or how many groups you're going to have. Okay, and then what's in the brackets is how many things should be in each row. Okay, once you've got that, put your tiles on the right hand side and then you're really just solving a two-step equation like we did in the last uh, couple of videos. There you go.